Okay, to launch the web application, let's take a look. The one thing to note is that you need to open a remote control preset in advance for um, the web application to pick up the changes. Um, if I hop over to the web app for a second, you can see the URL to get to the web application is localhost uh, port 7000 here. And you can see it says no preset available. And that's because we haven't opened any um, presets yet. So if I hop back into Unreal and we'll see, I'll double click on this to open it again. And if I hop back into the web application, you can see I now have the actual web app. It, and as soon as I uh, opened it on the web page, it, it popped right in. So uh, if you're launching the first time, that may be a gotcha that I want to call out. So the first time launching the web application, you'll see that at the top left here, when I click the button, you'll see this training is the preset that I have open. Uh, and any of the presets I've opened in the editor, it will show up here. Um, we have tabs along the top. We can add as many tabs as we want, um, moving kind of left to right. Then we have a play section. So when we go into um, either edit, uh, or play determines whether or not we can uh, edit anything. And so um, I'll go ahead and add a widget so that I can get into the, the play mode here. So let's go ahead and add one of these lights. We have all those uh, rec lights and we have uh, play, which kind of takes away all of the editing capabilities and then we have edit. We have multiple layouts, so you can have a singular layout with one single web widget, which I'll show you how we can add kind of multiples into that same space. We have it split vertically, split horizontally, and in a quad view. And so each one of these will have a little plus icon where we can add a widget. If we wanted to add a second widget to here, we can go ahead and add that. Uh, if we go ahead and click on this, you can see now we have those spread across a Kind of split vertical layout so we can we can decide and change these um, after the fact uh, running along the top here so those panels we can rename the panel and we could call these lights we can click on the tab itself and you can rename the tab or change the icon so since these are lights let's call this uh, light and apply so we have a nice little icon there we can obviously delete the tab. We can duplicate the tab once we get started if there's a reason to use that as a starting place for the next uh, tab that we're building. But let's go ahead and build this out horizontally like I had in the other example. So I'll keep adding the plus and you can see here's a list of all of the um, exposed uh, actors and corresponding web widgets. So because this is a checkbox, we just have an on and off switch. You can see it's uh, more of a boolean and we can change the name here which I already named in there but if we wanted to override we could override here but I'll, I'll leave it alone and I'm gonna go ahead and add several of these so I'll add all four of those lights um, and along here we have a uh, reset button which will reset the default state we have a delete button which will allow us to remove that widget which is a permanent action but you can always add it back um, we do have the ability to when we click on the gears to go to settings and that gets us back to the initial if we want to swap this for another widget which you know for example could be the contrast and we want to put in place of that we can add that in um, any of the corresponding, so if we had like a color picker, for example, we would get a color widget up here, matches the data type, of, data type of the data coming in. So for example, in this one that's a float, we can either have that be a gauge that we can rotate left and right, or we can have it be a slider. We can also set the minimum and the maximum. And so if we wanted this to be zero to 100, we can set that range. If we wanted this to be endless so we could keep going, we can set that to also be endless. Um, and so it's a very robust system. We can also uh, use this little button where it shows stacks to stack these widgets. So if it's a common uh, light switch, for example, that all share the same type, we can stack these into a, a layout where it shares the same widget. And so if I 
uh, go into say play mode here, I can turn this on or turn this off, and each one of these are a unique, uh, a unique widget. So that is helpful in a lot of cases, especially color correction when you want to stack a bunch of them uh, together. And again, it's this little button here, and those are stacked widgets. So moving down, let's do some color correction ones down here. Let's call this color correction. And go ahead and rename it. And let's add in the contrast, for example. Actually, let's start with um, let's start with the temperature. And I know in this case it goes from 1500 to typically 15,000. It will try to grab the defaults of the engine and go ahead and pre-populate those with what you can do in engine. Um, where we found some of them are still a work in progress, but you can override those. I'm trying to show here if you want. So let's go ahead and add that uh, color temperature in. And then let's go ahead and add in the contrast, for example. And in this case, these are a set of sliders. Um, I believe in here. Yep, sorry, that was in the other ones where I can make them horizontal. But um, we can come into here and we can also add the vignette. And let's see, we already have temperature. Let's do saturation as well. So let's say um, I don't like the order of those and I wanted contrast, I wanted it to be temp vignette and then, so what I can do is I can click on the vignette and I can say move left and I can swap those widgets. So I can easily move a widget left or right to get the, the kind of layout that I want. Um, and then if I do stacked, it will also vertically do these as stacked widgets with a scroll bar which may not be what you want in, in most cases, but just want to show the option of being able to kind of change the sliders to horizontal, horizontal or vertical. Um, the nice thing is you can also copy a layout. So if you wanted to copy that whole layout to another set, so if I came here and I hit paste, I can use this as a starting place for a whole another set of tools if I'm going ahead and, and uh, making those. So we can copy widgets and paste widgets, uh, which makes it really useful. So um, if I go into the play mode and then I'm going to uh, switch back so we can see both at the same time. Um, now we should be able to switch those lights on and off and make those controllable. We can change the color temperature. Um, you know, we can change the vignette. Uh, for example, um, and all of these can be controlled dynamically um, and quickly through the web application. So that's uh, the start. We can have multiple of these um, in case we wanted to have, if I opened the second, for example, uh, preset with the demo here, you can see now I have two presets. It, when it's clicked on the Unreal logo, it flies out and kind of gives us the full name. When we go back, that gives us um, uh, just a smaller view so we don't have to, but you can see now like I'm, I'm using a second preset to control. The nice thing is this is linked to the, um, the actual uh, panel itself and the, the details panel. So if I click on, for example, light one here and uh, turn this on and off, or sorry, it's that's four, then you can see that checkbox turns on and off and this reflects. And if I also do it in editor, it updates in the web app. Uh, so the two are truly linked um, through bi-directional communication. So we can um, work in editor or we can work in the application. We can also have multiples of this web app. We can have one on my desktop and we could have one on your iPad, for example. You could give that to the filmmaker and allow them to be able to control items on set as they need. Um, so it's a very robust system to be able to build your own uh, web apps. And then when we um, save the preset, once this is uh, relaunched again, the state of the uh, web application is always stored as metadata on the preset. So it's a very robust system um, and we'll check out some more in the next video.